Hey there, and welcome back to another Harry Potter video. And a while ago, I was reading through some old JK Rowling statements and interviews for when I made a video discussing how she's fallen from grace. From a beloved author who inspired millions with her works, to a family member that makes Christmas awkward as hell every year with their rude and degrading statements after a glass of wine or two. And as I perused through this minefield, I came across that age-old interview with Daniel Radcliffe where she discusses how she was in a very deep low point as she was midway through writing the series. And how that depression led her down a darker path in terms of her writing and almost made her make decisions that would have completely shifted the future of the franchise for good. To make a long story short, she said that when she first made the skeleton for the story, she never intended for any of the primary trio of characters, Harry, Hermione and Ron, to die at any point. She wanted all three to make it through to the end. But as her depression got worse, she started to skew towards a darker narrative. And for a moment in time, considered killing off the character, Ron. Now, obviously, she eventually decided against that, and we got the story we know. But today, I think I want to follow that rabbit hole down a little bit and piece together what the future of the franchise might have looked like if she actually went through with it and off the world's most famous ginger. So first things first, we have to define when this would have happened. Midpoint of the series is pretty vague, to say the least. But I would have to assume it refers to Goblet of Fire, because it's not only the literal middle book, but it comes just before the film's released and the franchise ascended beyond just a super popular book series, but to essentially god-tier fantasy and set a new standard for popularity. So I think it makes sense that this would be her low point. And beyond that, you can kind of see the skeleton of the story within Goblet of Fire itself. And all you really need to do is remove the age rule. Because let's be real, in a world that has so many incompetent adults, it wouldn't feel out of place for the age line to not even exist and for anybody to be allowed to compete. And I feel like this even makes a lot of sense for the story. It never really made sense to me that the whole school and the faculty kind of just believed he entered himself. Like how the hell was he going to be able to do magic so advanced that he could fool the age line created by Dumbledore and also create a new school for the cup to spit out his name? Without the rule, it makes it a lot more believable that nobody believes he didn't enter his name. And whilst this in turn means he probably gets less hate than in canon, he probably gets more angst in his own house, which would probably hurt him a bit more. And if Ron in turn is the other Hogwarts champion, well, it makes a lot of sense that he'd be mega salty that his one chance at glory at being set apart from his brothers and his friend is usurped by said famous friend. Plus, besides his chadness and his death and the fallout from that, Cedric doesn't really matter much to the overall narrative being told. You can sub out his champion role and death for somebody else, and everything still kind of works. So in this reality, you just keep him around as the unattainable jock that gets the girl that Harry wants, despite not even being the champ, and just have Harry be salty about it all book long. And realistically, not much even needs to change within the confines of this story. They still have their falling out, and they reconcile after the dragon task, because... Yeah, screw almost dying, it's time to hug it out. They can still be both epic failures at the Yule Ball, probably for the same reasons as in regular canon, with the caveat that in this version of events, I have no idea who their respective lake people are going to be. But at the same time, I don't really think that story thread matters all that much. Just chuck in a random Weasley for Ron and... And I don't know, if you want to ramp up the awkwardness of everything, have Dumbledore publicly embarrass poor Harry by having Cho down there, despite her not going to the ball with him. Maximum cringe, maximum angst. Nice. And it would honestly be pretty funny. Anyway, Crouch Senior still dies, yada yada yada. Heaps of things happen that are all the same. Ron and Harry then have a nice time with Mrs. Weasley and Bill before they go into the maze. They do the tie thing, and kaboom. Graveyard, kill the spare, dead Ron. Sad Harry. And honestly, now that I'm looking at it, it actually does make sense, and there are definitely elements of it that feel like they remained long after she abandoned this angsty, angsty plot. Ron's whole character arc is about feeling less and trying to carve out his own place, to prove himself. The last words he hears being kill the spare, pretty much cementing his legacy as being the sidekick, would fit in with that maximum angst theme she seemed to be going for at the time. Plus, him being killed by scabbers of all people after that creeper had been his pet for so long is just yet another gut punch of sadness. Anyway, Harry brings the body back, Barty Jr. gets smooched, and we end up in the hospital wing for the final act of the book where I think we'd still have the whole Molly Harry hug, but it just means a million times more in this scenario. Where in canon, it's a mother's hug that tells Harry he's safe and loved, you can add the fact that she wouldn't blame him for what happened into this version of the hug, because let's be real, she wouldn't blame him. It's not their style. 
If anything, I just think this would make her overprotectiveness of Harry going forward even worse. Anyway, that's how I think it would have played out. But as you can see, this is suddenly a hundred times darker, because now Ron is dead. Harry Potter's best friend, essentially the closest thing he would ever get to a brother, is dead. So yeah, from here I think one of two things happen. Either it goes down as one of the greatest twists of all time and catapults Ron into the top of everybody's list of the most tragic characters in literature, or it kills the momentum of the series because it really is a little bit too much too soon and makes it harder for the plot to go anywhere meaningful because you've already hit the most climactic point you could ever reach. Like how do you up the stakes after you take away the main character's best friend halfway through the series? Since everything's told from Harry's point of view, you can't top it anymore. He has nothing more important left to lose. But for the purpose of this, let's just pretend like it was considered the definitive twist that catapulted the series to new heights. So how in turn does this impact the story going forward? Well for starters, from start to finish, Order of the Phoenix is going to be the angstiest book of all time. I mean it already is, because in canon, Harry's fifth year sucks. He has PTSD about seeing somebody get killed, not even somebody he was that close to at that. He's once again ignored and neglected by his family, and I think he's underfed because of the whole diet storyline. He's largely brushed off by his friends about the Order, he gets attacked by Dementors, he's briefly expelled from school, he endures full-on trial by the government, he has to deal with feelings of betrayal by his friends, he has to help his foster father cope with his own traumas, he's being targeted by a known serial killer and terrorist, he's heavily bullied at school, he's smeared by the media, he's ignored by his mentor, He's tortured by a teacher, he's borderline abused by another teacher when he's supposed to be teaching him important magic, he deals with being possessed by said serial killer terrorist, he has a failed relationship with his longtime crush, he deals with the guilt of feeling like he put Mr. Weasley in the hospital, he fights a battle against the terrorists, he sees his foster father die right in front of him, and he's attacked by Voldemort himself. And then to top it all off, he learns that there's a prophecy that has ruined his entire life. So already that's enough angst to be getting on with, but then you have to add on the whole Ron being dead thing. That plot point ramps everything up 100%. And by that point it's the darkest teen book of all time I'd have to say. Now I'm not going to sit here for hours rewriting the entire plot of the books to fill in what would happen with this huge divergence because I'm not earning enough for that, but there are a few key plot areas that I'm going to take a look at. In the fifth book, there's already tension between Sirius and Molly about Harry getting involved in the Order, and I think this would be brought to the forefront a whole lot more. Unhealthy as it is, I would probably expect Molly to be 100% more possessive over Harry and overprotective to the max, simply because losing Ron was so traumatic and she's kind of trying to fill that void. Harry and Hermione's relationship would probably be… strained? After Ron's death, I feel like Harry's going to be a lot less forgiving about being left out of the loop and I wouldn't see him reacting too well to that. And on top of that, in canon, when he's stuck with Hermione for longer stretches, Harry gets a bit grumpy. He loves her, don't get me wrong, but Ron is his dude. As harsh as this sounds, I think there'd be a bit of resentment from Harry that she isn't Ron. Not resentment that she's alive, but simply that she isn't Ron, if that makes sense. It makes sense in my head. And considering that the romance had been planted with Ron and Hermione in the fourth book, I can see this going both ways. I mean they'd clearly resolve things to be friends again, but there'd have to be some mega angst before the end. And so, despite Ron being out of the picture, sorry shippers, but I think this would block off any possible romance between them at all. I feel like it would just be wrong if it makes sense. I mean, maybe you could substitute the Cho storyline for that, but I just think it wouldn't make sense for the characters at all. The shadow of Ron would be too much. And then on the other hand, you'd have to grant Neville, Luna and Ginny even larger roles to sort of fill the narrative void of having no Ron around, because without Ron, a lot of the scenes suddenly don't exist, and you need those storylines to fill out the void of the book, otherwise it's just going to get dull with just Harry or just Hermione. Maybe dive a bit deeper into Neville's backstory, or Luna's shenanigans to try and lighten up the story just a tad. And since I could still see the Harry-Ginny romance going down in this alternate universe, well, I guess now's as good a time as any to actually build that up a little bit more so it feels more organic come book 6. Obviously, a bunch would be very very different going forward, but I think key plot points like Sirius dying and Dumbledore dying need to be preserved. Because ultimately, the point is that Harry's supposed to have no adults left to turn to that would actually be able to properly help him. 
And so I think largely the main plot is preserved, which feels odd to say because this is such a key pivot in tone and has such a big character removed, but I think that's all it is. A shift in tone and a lot of minor story points removed. The series gets a whole lot darker, yes, but the plot can't diverge all that much because certain key events need to happen for the series to actually end. Ron or no Ron, Voldemort's still going to give him visions. Ron or no Ron, he learns about the Horcruxes, and Dumbledore dies. Ron or no Ron, Harry goes on the hunt, with Hermione of course. And of course, for the plot to actually end, they get it all done. It's just the tone of things would be so much darker. Because you can't go back to that happy-go-lucky let's have fun in charms class after a moment like that. So I think it would just become a supreme angst fest. And now that I've taken a closer look at it, honestly, she made the right call. I think it would have been too much too soon, and there's no way to pull back on that once it happens. If she was going to do it, it had to happen in the final book. Killing off Ron would have ramped things up to maximum and forced them to stay there for three more books. And so in the end, I'm very glad it didn't happen. It wouldn't have been a pleasant read anymore. It would have been a chore. That being said though, those are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think would have happened if Ron died? Would you have liked to see that? Or are you glad she held firm? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to leave a comment and let me know.